So let's go to Philippians, the third chapter, and verse 10. You will find these words. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. I want to talk today about the passion of the Christ. Repeat that after me, if you will, the passion of the Christ. I'm sure many of us, several years ago, we saw this popular movie that took the world by storm, Passion of the Christ, written by Mel Gibson. So much passion in the movie, but let, let me tell you something. There is in the Bible a man of God who had a real passion for Christ. His name was Paul. Paul, who was now familiar with God, his prayer was that I, that I may know him. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. I want to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. I want to be made conformable unto his death. What a passion Paul had. As I begin this message today, I think that it would be good for me to really break down for you what passion is because you can't have passion of the Christ if you don't understand what passion is. Well, passion simply means a strong craving, strong desire, strong appetite, strong urge. It means intensity high wrought emotion that compels one to action it's it's fervor it's fire it's eagerness it's excitement it's it's passion passion of the christ passion of the Christ. And I want you to be clear on that because that's what I'm, I'm talking about. I don't want you to go to some other passion today. Just stay right with me. Stay right here. It's, it's the passion of, of the Christ. Well, if this is what passion means, then I need to understand what passionless means. When you think about the word passionless and how many people are in this category, even as it relates to the things of God, frigid, cold, unresponsive, detached, unaffected, unconcerned, cold-blooded, heartless, can come to church but don't feel anything. You can hear a word, but it doesn't move you. You can hear a song, but it doesn't even allow you to get into the presence of God because there is no passion for him for some people. It's just form and fashion. I'm just supposed to be here. My mama told me if I don't come to church sometime that God is going to kill me, but that's the only reason that I'm here. But there is, there is no, no passion. So here's passion and here's passionless. So the question is, what category do you fit into? Paul said that I may know him. That's, that's all that matters to me now. Paul said, I've got education, i got degrees, I have this, I have that, but there is one thing that I want to do in my life. I want this more than anything else. I have a passion for this. I want to know him. Well, can I tell you something about knowing him? You've got to remember that the essential sign of discipleship, the essential sign of fellowship, the essential sign of a relationship with the Lord is love. Somebody say love. In fact, I want you to look at John, the 13th chapter, and I'll begin reading at verse 34. And this is what the Bible says, and a new commandment I give unto you. This is fresh. This is alive. That ye love 
one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Now look at verse 35. By this, if you want a sign, it's not how much you come to church. It, 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 it's not how big your Bible is. It's not how many tongues you speak in. But if you're really concerned about having the passion of the Christ, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If you love, if you have love one to another, if you all caught up in yourself, you don't have the passion of Christ. We've got church members who have who come to church but don't have the passion of Christ because here's a good sign. you got to learn how to love somebody else. We have too many selfish people in the church. It's all about you. Listen, that does not come from Jesus. That comes from the world. That's why the world is in trouble right now. America still hasn't figured it out because you got some people still on Capitol Hill trying to give the rich folk a tax cut instead of doing like God told you to do, help those who really need. And if you help those who really need, then God can straighten this nation out. We got, we got selfish people once we arrive. Once we arrive, we feel as though we don't have to help anybody anymore. But the songwriter said, if I could just help somebody as I, as I pass along, if I could just cheer somebody with a word or with a song, if I could just show somebody that he's traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain until we get back to the basics, until we really understand that it's not just about you. But it's about somebody else. So sometimes, sometimes I have to go when I don't feel like going. Sometimes I have to do when I don't feel like doing. Because if I'm not in my place, it may be the place that is missing where somebody is there who needs to hear a word from me right in the seat that I was going to be seated in. But I missed it because it was all about me. That's what I love about Jesus. Not only did he love his neighbor as himself, but he loved his neighbor more than himself because the Bible said he laid down his life for others. That key word is sacrifice. What is a sacrifice? You have to touch something that cost you something. It's not a sacrifice if it don't cost you anything. That's, that's why I had, I had to get beyond the dollar in church because God's been too good to me. You know, just, you know, some folk, you, you, when you come up to the altar, even while the preacher is preaching because the word is blessing you, you, you know, if God has been good to you, you ain't supposed to just throw a dollar down. Like you at the casino. Freak that tag. When you come, when you come to the altar, it ought to be because something touched me and this is a sacrifice. Now, if that's your last dollar, it's just like the woman who gave her last. God honors the last. You don't even have to have a whole lot. But when I sacrifice, when it costs me something for somebody, that dollar is costing you something. Then you ought to give that dollar so God can turn around and bless you some more. But I'm talking about somebody that has reached the level where you don't even sacrifice anymore. Some of our children will miss out on the greatest blessings in ministry because some parent is too lazy to sacrifice to bring them to a rehearsal, to bring them to a youth meeting. I don't have time. I'm too busy. But let me tell you, if you want victory and if you have the passion of the Christ, it's going to cost you something. You got to sacrifice even for the future of your children. Touch somebody, tell them sacrifice, sacrifice that I... 
that I may know him. That's what Jesus was all about. He was about sacrificing. We're searching for love and unselfish love. So then when I look, when I look at this passage of scripture, I understand and I understand clearly what it's about. This particular story is about the crucified life. Now, what is meant by the crucified life? Well, when we look at Galatians 5 and verse 24, this is what the word said, and they that are Christ, if you belong to Christ, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If I belong to Christ, then what has to happen? I too, just like Jesus, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering, I have to crucify my flesh. Now, now look at the word flesh. This word used by the apostles was not to describe the whole body, the entire body bundle of humanity which we possess but this word flesh is to describe the evil the sin the badness the wickedness the hate and the jealousy that is inside of me and I need to take authority over this flesh the word flesh was a common philosophical term to to summarize all that was low, all that was bad, all that was wrong against God. Now, please understand when you talk about killing the flesh, it's not to suppress that which is good so that you will live a miserable life as a Christian. It bothers me because as soon as some people get saved and you turn your life over to the Lord, all of a sudden you become the crucified one. You think you're supposed to look like it, walk like it, talk like it. When some folk get saved, they think that they're just supposed to look ugly now for Jesus. Take my makeup off. Don't fix myself up because I'm saved now. Don't even comb your hair no more. Just nappy. Just, just nappy. Just, I'm saved. I'm, I'm saved. Just, just walking around. Don't even take no bath. I'm too happy. I'm, I'm shouting. I'm saved. No. That, that, that's not what it's all about. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. When we talk about the crucified life, it's not talking about getting rid of the good things. Some people get saved, they don't even laugh no more in church. You ever notice that? They don't, don't say nothing funny. Some, some things make you laugh, and you look at them. They're just binding the devil all around them. It's all right to laugh. It's, it's all right to laugh. Laughter is good for the soul. It's medicine for the soul. Don't get so deep you can't laugh. I mean, God is not, he's not supposed to. Just because I get saved, I mean, we just so wore out. You can just tell Christians sometimes, you know, I came from a small city and people be walking home from church. You could tell the saints. Number one, they shouted so much they had to take the shoes off. They can't walk. <laughs> hey, honey, bless you. No, no, and then, then we begin to sing those songs and we just, I'm tired. And I'm weary. But I must talk. Lord, nobody wants to hear that. Somebody wants to hear some victory in your life. So, Lord, allow me to separate the good from the bad. I, I, I need to understand this. And so, those are the things that I need to get rid of. It's not to suppress that which is good 
so that you will live a miserable life. Living like a monk. You know, that's what the monks, when they go to the monastery, they do that because the world is so wicked. I got to close off from the world. Too much sin out there. Listen, you got to live where sin is, but you can be in the world, but not of the world. Because who's going to witness to somebody if you're so saved and you're shut off from the world because they're so bad and you can't go to the prostitute corner, you can't go to the bar room to minister to somebody, you can't go to the pimp corner to witness to somebody, then who's going to witness to them? Another pimp that's pimping? God needs a witness from somebody who is willing to make a sacrifice who understands and understands clearly what your purpose is all about and my purpose is to serve and to take on the passion of Christ. Well, listen, man's great enemy is self. You want to know a great enemy in your life? You. And it has happened from the beginning of time with Adam and Eve when God gave man a choice. You remember in the Garden of Eden, in the Garden of Eden, here's where the choice came about. There were two trees in the garden. The one tree was the tree that they were supposed to focus in on. It was the tree of life. The tree of life was a means by which man could live on and on and on. Just focus in on the tree of life. But there was another tree in the Garden of Eden. It was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, this tree of knowledge of good and evil, it represented to man his independent right to choose against God if he wanted to. That was a whole lot of power, but God said, I got to give man that power because I don't want man to be a robot. The only way that I can make man valid in his decision as it relates to his devotion and his passion and his love for me, I got to make man a free moral agent. I don't want to be able to turn him on and off and it not be real. Let me tell you, the true passion of those of us who love God, he wants a true dedicated heart. He don't need phony folk. He could have made robots. He could have made all of us robots. And every time he wanted us to lift our hands, we would lift our hands. If he wanted us to put our hands down, we could put our hands down. If he wanted us to sing, we could sing. If he wanted us to shout, we could shout. But he said, no, I don't want to make you shout. I, I don't want to make you sing. I want something on the inside that you love me so much that you're going to do it because somebody else is not making you do it oh God I want to know you I, this is no game to me Lord I really want to know you I don't want to know the church members I don't want to know the church building I want to get to know you because I've seen too many people who know the church they know all the business of the church but they don't know Jesus so so this tree of knowledge of good and evil, God said, no, I got to make man free, man's choice to love and serve God. That's the only way it can be valid. But guess what? Man chose the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Look at man. He would rather develop his life as he saw it and do his own thing. All he had to do was be obedient to God, but no, I want to do my own thing. I want what I want. I don't care what God says. I want what I want. Well, that goes all the way back to the beginning of time where the curse came in. It came in the garden because man chose the wrong tree. Instead of the tree of life, he went to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, I come to tell you, the same kind of war is going on today. But guess what? The Garden of Eden now with the two trees have been relocated. 
No, 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 no. We're not worried about the trees in the Garden of Eden now. The trees have been relocated. And guess where those trees have been relocated? They have been relocated into your mind. That's where the tree of life is. The tree of life represents the spirit. And all I got to do is go to the spirit. When the devil works on my nerves, just go to the spirit. Just trust the spirit. The Bible says in all thy ways, if you acknowledge him, he will direct your path. All you got to do is go to him. He said, I'll even keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. All I got to do in my mind, go to the spirit. But what do I do? I go to my mind mind. I go to my fleshly mind. This mind that goes against God. Even Paul said in my mind there's a war that's going on. Every time I go to do good, evil is right there. He keeps messing with my mind. He's offering you some fruit in your mind. He wants he wants your mind. But what I got to say, no matter what my mind says, I got to look to the hills from whence cometh my help. And I got to say that I may know you. I, I, I want to know you. Oh, yeah, I could hear Paul say, look, I, I, I know how to speak 14 different languages. I've been to college. I've sat under some of the greatest professors you could ever sit under. But my mind, my mind is still messed up because if I don't turn my mind over to Jesus and somebody, you're wrestling with it right now. Every time, I don't care how saved you are, how big your Bible is, don't act like you're so holy. Paul was the greatest preacher that ever lived. He said, every time I go to do good, evil is right there but I come today to take authority because once I get to know him and find out that he's the best thing that ever happened to me devil you can't even offer me what you want to offer me because what God offers me is so much better I know I gotta move on but listen you know when we get saved you know what our problem is when we get saved we feel that our self nature is supposed to go away. When I get saved, I just go blank. Don't remember no past phone numbers. Don't remember no past places that I went to. Don't remember no past relationship. Let me tell you, the devil knows your weakness. So I got some news for you when you get saved. I know you think your old self is supposed to go away, but it doesn't. It's still there. You can be standing up singing, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And here's the devil over here talking about, see her face everywhere I come. <laughs> see her in the street and at the picture show. Have you seen her? <laughs> Self. Self. The devil. The devil will try to make you believe that you are supposed to improve self. But Christ did not come to improve self. He came to replace self. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. Because if he tries to improve you, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get the big head. You're going to thank you all of that because you have been improved. But you see, he wants you to humble yourself every time he blesses you. You ought to be able to say, by the grace of God, I am what I am. If it wasn't for his grace, I wouldn't even be able to stand up here and preach. You wouldn't be able to have the gifts that you have. No, it's not because you've been so good. It's not because you've been so wonderful, but I dare you to high five somebody, tell them grace, grace, grace. Oh, nothing, not, that's all it is. 
that's all it is. That's all it is. It's nothing but the grace of God. You can act like you all of this and you all of that, but the only reason that you are here today is because God has been good to you. In fact, you need to look back and see where you come from and you will realize and thank God. Thank you for taking out the stony heart and putting in a heart of flesh. Oh, that's why the old folk used to say, when he changed me, I looked at my hands and my hands looked new. I looked at my feet and they did too. I started to walk and I had a new walk. I started to talk and I had a new talk. Why? Because he replaced. That's why I gave him my old mind, my old mind with all of its sinful ways. And I heard him say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, uh, I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you. Anybody besides me today, you feel the passion of the Christ deep down inside of you. One more thought and I'm going to let you go. It says that I may know you in the power of your resurrection and in the fellowship of your suffering being made conformable Unto his death. Now what does this mean? Hmm. You're in the right place at the right time. You must kill self. The Christian is of no use to God until self is dead. And guess what? I got some news for you. Self dies daily. Paul said, I die daily. <laughs> I think I got this out of the way. You ever saw a monster movie? And the monster, you saw him shoot the monster. The monster is dead. But then you start to hear that creepy move, music. And then the hand start shaking again and you screaming at the movie screen the monster ain't dead the monster he, he's coming back up again I'm here to tell you the thing that you think is dead you gotta watch that dead thing because the, you can't get the big head because it'll creep right back up again that's why you gotta take authority you gotta fast you gotta pray you gotta tell the devil uh uh you ain't coming up again every time he tries to come up kill him again Every time he tries to rise up again, kill him again. Yeah, devil, you got to know you will not control my life and self. You got to die. You got to die. Now, now please understand, God, in this passage of scripture, in what I'm talking about, we cannot kill the body. He's not talking about that. He's not talking about you killing your body and stabbing yourself and seeing the blood and telling folk, come see the blood because I, I cut myself and I love Jesus. No, 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 no. He's not talking about that. This is spiritual, y'all. He's not talking about your natural body, but he's talking about spiritual things as you turn it over to him you got to die because we are not called to a process of self crucifixion but to a crucifixion already accomplished do you know he's already paid the price all I got to do is get in the mood of the passion can I just show you Galatians 2 and 20 this is what Galatians 2 and 20 says I am crucified oh I know I'm here today but I am crucified that I may know him with Christ Nevertheless, oh, the devil thought it was over for me just like he thought it was over for Jesus. But I live. I dare you to look at somebody, tell him I live. But wait, I'm not going to get the big head. This is what Paul says. Yet not I. You're wondering why I'm making it in a recession. And you're wondering why God keeps on blessing me. Because yet not I, but Christ liveth in me I should have cracked up a long time ago I should have lost my mind a long time ago but because I know him and because I have a passion and I want to know him even in his suffering because there's one thing I learned in his suffering even though he went down he got up again and the life which I now live in the flesh 
I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Anybody glad about it? I feel like preaching in this. I'm glad that I know him. But you see, Paul said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. But you see, Paul didn't stop there. Some folks, the only way they want to know God is just on the victory side. But how many of you know you got to go through something to get to the victory side? Paul said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his sufferings. Because if you don't know how to suffer and go through and turn it over to God, you're going to find yourself defeated. So I'm letting the devil know today because God got up. Because Jesus got up. I'm getting up today with all power in my hands. Do I have some witnesses here? When you turn it over to Jesus, won't he work it out? That's why game time is over. Game time is over. Touch somebody, tell them game time is over. This ain't no Easter thing for me where well, I just get happy on Easter. I come today to praise him because I want to know you. I need to know how real you are. I need to know you're the best thing that ever happened to me. I tell you just to lift your hands and tell them I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. You got to tell them like you mean it. I'm talking about with passion, with fervor, with fire, with excitement. I want to know you. Is there anybody you're glad about it? I'm glad today. This ain't form and fashion. Yeah. If you see me tomorrow, I'll still be acting like this. If you see me Tuesday, I'm still going to be praising him. Catch me early in the morning. Catch me late in the evening. Because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. Oh, I'll get him the glory. Give him the glory. And I don't know about you. I'm so glad he went into the grave. And I got some news for you. Sometimes you got to go into your dark grave. Sometimes you got to go into a cold grave. And like Jesus, sometimes you got to stay there. You got to stay there. But I'm glad it don't end there. I'm glad it don't end there. Because I feel like today it's somebody's resurrection day. Early. 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 He got up with all power and I speak it in your life. He's got the keys now. Yes, the enemy, they thought that they had Jesus. They said, what we're going to do, we're going to put guards around the tomb so we'll make sure nobody steals his body. And there they were, three days sitting around the grave. But what they didn't know, Jesus wasn't even in there. But he made his way down to hell. Y'all don't hear me. Satan could hear him walking in hell trying to hide from Jesus. I could hear the demons say, Jesus is down here. The devil's afraid now. But I could hear Jesus say, where's that devil? I come to get the keys. You gonna give me the keys. And you know what happened? Jesus went to hell and he got the keys they thought they had the grave covered but early Sunday morning he got up out of the 
grave. Hey, all power. And I'm here to tell you, he's passing the keys on to you. You have the keys. Take authority. Come against the enemy. Just keep on praising him. Keep on shouting. No weapon that is formed that shall prosper. Hey, thank you. You gotta know. You gotta know. Lord, I wanna know you. Nothing else matters. If you take your seats for a moment, this is my desire. Give me one pure and holy passion. Give me one magnificent obsession. Give me one glorious ambition for my life. Know and follow hard after you. Let me say that again. Give me one pure and holy passion. That's all I want. Give me one magnificent obsession. Oh my. Give me one glorious ambition for my life. To know and Follow hard after you. Come on, help me say, yeah. Give me one pure and holy passion. That's all I want. Give me one magnificent obsession. Yeah. to 
just here running after you, running after you. I will run I'm running after you, running after you. Leave me home. I'm running after you, running after you. Leave me home. You gotta run after him. You gotta run after him. Just touch the hem of his garment. Leave. 